I'm going to do tell us a little bit about the evolution of hip hop. Okay. So I heard so many um, uh, people telling us uh, how hip hop was born. Yes. In, in, in the city of uh, New York. So can you tell us a little bit, like from well, well, from the last poet to sure, the next generation? Sure. Sure. Um, our album came out in 1970. Hip hop wasn't out yet. Uh, hip hop became popular in the early mid 70s and then of course in the 80s but i had a nice talk with africa bombada bombada and cool hurt mm -hmm. and uh, both of them when they met me they were both just acting like you know i was a king from another land and they said brother i said i said come on man i respect you guys you know he says yeah brother but you you gave us you laid the foundation for us uh, I said, and I said, well, how how did we do that? Because I wanted to know. It's, and they, and they both were from the Bronx area. He said, listen, we had nothing to listen to, but the last poets. You guys had opened up the door. You said things that nobody else had ever said. And so when we heard what you guys did, now we didn't have the politics that you guys had. We weren't as aware politically, but we knew that the way you were saying what you were saying and what you were doing, we wanted to do something like that. So the only thing we had to really listen to was The Last Poets. And so that's one of the reasons that we give you credit for being the forefathers of hip hop, because you did inspire us by what you said and how you said it. Because, um, and then there's one of the members of the group which I even give more credit to anyone else for being influential in terms of hip hop. His name is Jalal Mansour Nourdeen. Yeah, and he and he rhymed everything. I mean, we used to walk down the street and having a conversation. He rhymed the conversation. I mean, he just rhymed everything. Mm -hmm. So when he um, when we put out our first albums, our first album, uh, the, all the rhyming pieces on there were just phenomenal because I think I, I, I always felt he had a genius ability to put rhyming words together. You got some people that rhyme and it's kind of corny because you can almost imagine what they're gonna say. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, you know, I went to the, I, I went to bat, I hit a cat, you know, ran across the street, was a rat, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it becomes really flaky. Well, he had really sensible rhymes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always considered him to be probably the greatest influence of hip hop because a lot of the hip hop artists, I don't know any hip hop artist who does not rhyme. Mm -hmm. I mean, rhyming has become a real essential part mm -hmm. to the point where when I'm working in schools, I'm actually teaching poetry, mm -hmm. I have to tell the kids, all poetry does not have to rhyme. Mm -hmm. You can, it has a rhythm but it doesn't have to rhyme. Mm -hmm. So they have to get that in the same because a lot of kids think that you can't write a poem unless it's rhyming. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so we had a style that was influential mm -hmm. and then we were in your face. You know, you're never gonna see the last poet's gonna go on stage and uh, take a book of poetry, put it on a music stand and read our poetry. Mm -hmm. We came directly looking dead in your face, mm -hmm. kicking the words, saying what we felt from our hearts, mm -hmm. and saying it with a lot of vigor mm -hmm. and, a, and a lot of feeling. And um, that style has gone on to be about hip hop as well. So we did do a lot to set off, the, set the stage mm -hmm. for hip hop. And I accept that, uh, and I appreciate but I appreciate many uh, of the hip-hop artists, like I, Melly Mel has recorded with us on our Holy Terror album. I'm very proud of him because he's got skills and he has things to say that will live forever. I mean, um, we were, Tony and I were talking about the other day, don't push me cause I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. Ha 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 ha. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going under. That line is truthful today. Mm -hmm. That hasn't changed. I mean, and that's a hip hop classic line. Mm -hmm. And it and it actually grabbed the imagination of people all over the world. Mm -hmm. People could relate to that. Mm -hmm. Rakim is another great artist. Uh, KRS is another great hip hop artist. You got quite a few. Chuck D mm -hmm. and Public Enemy, mm -hmm. you know, fight the power. I mean 
these guys, they really held the banner in terms of trying to say something using that rhyme scheme, using that style of hip hop. And the only group that came before them that did anything close to that would be the last poets. Mm -hmm. So I do accept the applause, the accolades, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I truly appreciate the art the young artists who are who are kicking it and really saying something. Mm -hmm. If you're just up there talking nonsense, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. Because there are things that we need to say mm -hmm. more than booty shaking and money making. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some other there are lots there are a lot of things on our minds. Um, America is a very convoluted country in many ways. So mm -hmm. we get we get things confused with making money being more important than making friends. Okay. So that you know that now hip hop is worldwide. Yes. So wherever you go in the world, you yes, see people rapping, right. dancing, break dancing. So and each culture, each country has their way to do it. Right. Is it? This is the way you can define hip hop rap. Does it have to be with that American beats? Does it have to be with the drums? Does it have to be with the percussion? Does it have to be like no, no. It, and you know, see, that's the thing that I've learned in Senegal too. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of think hip hop really probably got started a few hundred years ago, and I think Africa was the home because all you got to do is have some words that make sense and that are poetically and have some poetic flavor and you can have a kora or a djembe drum or a xylophone you can have any kind of instrument to help you with to, to set a rhythm and then you can ride over that and i think that style has been used a long time i think that we have been running our mouths over instruments for a long time I think that it's just gotten popular with the advent of hip hop being placed on such a high pedestal. But um, I think that the whole idea of speaking of the spoken word over a beat, mm -hmm. I think that's ancient. I don't think that's new. We just haven't, now we had, we did have the pleasure of having a young man with us when we were in Senegal for, he was with us a few, a few days, mm -hmm. his name was Dr. D. Mm -hmm. And he's actually working on his PhD in hip hop mm -hmm. and breaking it down as to letting it be known that this whole thing that we call hip hop has roots in Africa mm -hmm. because you've always had African voices accompanied by some instrument and the voices were always saying something that we could use, something that would take us, that would excite and ignite our minds. And so that's nothing new. And I think that, you know, the instrumentation, the instrument can vary. I mean, in Senegal, you got quite a number of young men walking around with guitars. Mm -hmm. They're not walking around with drums. Mm -hmm. And they've got hip hop ideas and they're playing their guitars mm -hmm. and they're, they're rapping over that. And I love it. I was very impressed with the energy and the talent that I saw when I was in Senegal. That, that blew my mind. I just, I mean, I know how talented black people are, but when you actually get in the midst and you're with African brothers and sisters, especially the brothers, and you see how easily uh, creative they are with the words and, and the music, oh man, it just makes you feel great. So I had wonderful moments just sitting on the beach and here comes some brother with his guitar and, and he starts playing something and we're making up a rap or we're making up a song. I mean, that's, that's almost like just everyday living mm -hmm. in Senegal. Mm -hmm. So now, like, uh, if I'm a young MC from Sudan or Senegal mm -hmm. or South Africa, mm -hmm. and I watch a lot of TV, mm -hmm. and most of it, uh, what I see on TV is hip-hop from America, mm -hmm. should I take that as, as an example? Well, the, well the, the, unfortunately, that's how many of our young people have gotten have adopted the word nigger because they've heard a lot of hip hop from America and many of the artists use the word nigger like it's their first name. Like we might say sir or mister, mm -hmm. so they say nigger. Uh, just, like, just like I was very surprised when we were at the uh, Hip Hop Academy mm -hmm. that um, 
after each after each um, poet or, or, or artist did their poem, they would say slam, like like they were connecting to the idea that we have poetry slams in America, mm -hmm. and they were just taking that term and attaching it to the end of their performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always disagreed with slam. I never thought you could slam poetry. I just felt poetry was too sacred to be slam. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that uh, it's become a vehicle mm -hmm. for quite a number of young people to make money, mm -hmm. to travel. We've got slam teams battling against each other. San Francisco slam team against New York slam team, mm -hmm. and they and they they and then they get credit for being the best slam team in the country, and they they travel and share. And I've discovered, so okay, I'm not really endorsing the language slam, but I'm also recognizing that we are poets and we have poetry inside of us. And we have got to have a vehicle to express that. Mm -hmm. So even though the name is kind of odd to me, mm -hmm. the actions are very necessary. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I do see the value. And I do know that everything we do is going to find, uh, is going to be influential around the world. Because no one's got more cameras going on and more sound going on than America. So America has the apparatus, America has the vehicle to pump up the volume on everything we do. Mm -hmm. And so people listen, they're always watching TV, they're always listening, and America is at the forefront of, um, of what's hip and what's hot. Mm -hmm. And people actually listen and think, oh man, having a girl with a big booty, is, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Let me do a rap about that. Mm -hmm. Having a nice car, that's what's happening. Let me do a rap about that. Oh, this guy called himself a nigga. He said, oh man, I'm gonna use nigga in my poetry. We need to recognize that certain things need to be discarded and uh, as long as I'm around, I'm gonna speak on it. So, hip hop today in, mm -hmm. in Africa, hip hop today mm -hmm. in, in America, for example. What, what's your idea? What's your take? I on think that? that hip hop is 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 alive and well, and I think that uh, hip hop can be a major instrument in bringing world change. I think that if we actually take the uh, conscious artists that we have and 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 you deal with hip-hop or the spoken words it's because see hip-hop and poetry they're all connected it's all connected so you can have spoken word artists and hip-hop artists working together i think that we see the value in life and in humanity we can start directing our poems and our hip-hop uh records to speak to the need of the people. I think that there's, like, jazz used to be the, the big music. It still has its place in the world. Mm -hmm. Jazz has always been healing. I mean, you could be in a bad way and put on some John Coltrane or Eric Dolphy or Miles Davis and feel much better. Hip hop has, to, has that same responsibility of saying something that could make you feel better about yourself. And hip hop artists need to start concentrating on that. How can we uplift people? How can we raise the standards of humanity and not be caught up with the material world, with the cars and the girls and the money? Because right now hip hop is kind of stuck in that zone of being almost uh, an item in a circus. And it could be what it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. and that's the voice of the people. So, so you think that today hip hop is li alive and well? Uh, it's alive and well, a little polluted in mm -hmm. some places because many of the the record producers mm -hmm. they want you to say mf, they want you to say nigga because they know those terms grab attention and grabs the imagination of a lot of the kids. So they'll pump that, they'll sell that, even though they know it's wrong, but the idea of using your voice to deliver messages and, and to say something, that's not going to go away. It's going to get even bigger. Because the fact is that the majority of people on the planet cannot sing, but they can run their mouth. So that's going to always be at the forefront too. It's easier for me to sit and write a poem or write a rap and get that off and get my props for that as opposed to me sitting down and singing a song on key. Mm -hmm. So so hip, 
I always used to say in the beginning, we got a lot of hip hop artists because they did not make it as singers. So they decided that they would talk and make their move. And it's fine because people can identify with that. A lot of people identify with, with talking. And uh, that's what we do. But we need to have meaningful things to say when we talk. So if, you, if I tell you to give me five artists today in America, five MC or group, whatever. Well, yeah, uh, five, five artists. I would start. I would. I would go to Melly Mel. I'd say. But the, what about the new generation? Of the new generation. Right now. Well, Nas. The last, yes. Nas yeah. is one. Uh, definitely, Common is another. I mean, because uh, we actually did a video with Common, uh, and it was the corner. And I remember when he called us up. He, um, I said, well, what's the theme? What do you, what do you, uh, what's your, what's your what's the plan? He says, well, I want to do a piece about the corner. Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you want to do a piece about drugs being sold on the corner or hoes being sold? He said, nah, nah, the corner has become a, get a meeting place for us to get ourselves together. I said, okay. And so I wrote a piece, and I wrote a piece, and we produced a very, well, it was a Grammy award-winning um, piece. Mm -hmm. And we were invited to the Grammys and all that. I think, um, uh, Will I Am and uh, Black Eyed Peas, mm -hmm. they they won the um, because they they were they had a piece called Don't Funk with My Love and it was yeah. kind of yeah. it was kind of corny but they did win mm -hmm. and because I think that the Grammy committee was probably a little nervous and pumping up the volume on the last post because everybody knows how political we are mm -hmm. and th we're not exactly going along with the system mm -hmm. so that was a problem. But we did get in the running, and I did get a chance to um, work with some of the folks. And Kanye West was very important in helping to produce this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there are some folks that you know I respect in that area. And and Common is definitely one. Nas Nas when he did his album on Niggas, mm -hmm. uh, he had been told asked by Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton not to do it. And then he called me up and he says, man, I need a nigga expert. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so Nas called you to ask Yeah, you. Nas called me to ask me to be on his, his album, which is about three years, three years ago now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we, so I did a piece mm -hmm. on there and it was very well received. Um, there are some other artists. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not a Lil Wayne fan. I haven't heard <laughs> anything by Lil Wayne that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's like a caricature. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're gonna have characters like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there, uh, I haven't heard too many. I've always appreciated um, Queen Latifah because of the piece that she did, U N I T Y. Because mm -hmm. U N I T Y is, is just simply spells unity, mm -hmm. and that's important. That's an ingredient that we need to really concentrate on, because it's the disunity that causes a lot of the gang fights and a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you got the Crips and the Bloods coming together mm -hmm. and not fighting each other, our communities will be real safe. Talib Kweli. Hmm? Talib Kweli. Yeah, Talib Kweli and Dead Prez, of course, those are my friends. Actually, I did a piece with Dead Prez some years ago, mm -hmm. and it was one of my classic love songs called Mind Bl Sex. Bl yeah, Mind Sex, and yeah. the piece I did was called Black Rose. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to South Africa and this beautiful black girl ran up to me at the airport. She says, I'm your black rose. And I said, well, that's the case. You got to stay with me for a while. And so she traveled to Durban and Cape Town with us. And, jo and we, of course, we were in Johannesburg. But yeah, uh, those are my boys, M1 and, and them from, uh, uh, from Dead Press. I love those brothers. But they've always been conscious. They've right. never really been playing around in the, uh, in, in, in the, the toilet. They've always tried to elevate our thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate them. Mm -hmm. uh, when I first met Rakim, I've always liked Rakim. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that he had talent. Mm -hmm. I liked his voice. And I remember one day when I met him, he started bowing down to me. I said, cut it out, man. I mm -hmm. said, I bow to you mm -hmm. because you're true to the language. And then you don't use the word nigga and you don't curse. Mm -hmm. And you say some real funky stuff. And it's good. I appreciate that. I came through the door. I said it before. I never let the mic magnetize me no more because it's biting me and fighting me and biting me to rhyme. I mean, I, I just appreciate the the swagger 
that he had with, with his lyrics mm -hmm. and how he he stepped up to the plate mm -hmm. and um, and then of course KRS is a is a good friend of mine mm -hmm. and he's always been conscious he's been conscious he's and he's one of the architects of hip-hop as well he goes back back to the beginning mm -hmm. um, so I think that hip-hop has a, a place plus I'm working with young people all the time mm -hmm. I have an open house in my house every Sunday mm -hmm. and I've got some young people that come through my house who have talent for days mm -hmm. and um, I've got a young man named Key who wrote a classic piece, of, which I hope you'll have out very short, mm -hmm. called um, Spit. And he says, I spit for those who can't spit. And I, I spit for, for the ones who've been killed. I've spit. And so he's taking that term spit mm -hmm. and politicized it and talked about how he is actually being a voice for the voiceless mm -hmm. by spitting his lyrics. And he's, it's an excellent, excellent piece. And uh, I've quite a number of young people that I'm around on a regular basis who I'm helping to nurture mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're just getting better and better. So I have faith that we're going to be able to pull ourselves out of the mire, out of this madness and see a brighter day. But that's, I have faith mainly because I'm working towards that too. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm on the sideline looking. I'm involved mm -hmm. and I stay involved. I think that's the only real way that you can make sure change takes place. You gotta be a part of that change. You got to be about the change yourself. You can't just talk about the change. Mm -hmm. I mean, Barack Obama ran for president talking about change, but the truth is that you've got to be the change you want to see. Mm -hmm. And if you're that, then we can see some changes because we can see you. Mm -hmm. And we know by the way you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself. I mean, there's, we have more love than we've got hate. Mm -hmm. We've got more joy than we've got pain. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to share. The joy, the love, the peace. I mean, I don't think those bombers, if they had been around the right people, would have done what they did. Mm -hmm. If they'd had some young people around them who were positive and thinking positively. I think one of the things that stood out to me was that the older brother had said something to the fact that he had been in America for 10 years and he couldn't find any American friends. It was, he didn't have no American friends. And I mean, that's really sad. But then I have to think about what kind of person was he where he couldn't gravitate to somebody else mm -hmm. who could see him as a friend and they were from America. So if you're feeling isolated, then you can think of some crazy stuff to do. But if you are connected to the people, you're not gonna hurt nobody. So we have to show the connections. Mm -hmm. And we have to recognize that humanity is very strong mm -hmm. and cannot be beat. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure of doing a song after we had been in Soboba Day in Senegal. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and the song is called Soboba Day. Mm -hmm. And then Derek Jordan, who was traveling with us, is a fantastic musician. He dressed that song up. I mean, I wrote the song and made up the melody, but Derek, man, he put some lacing and grace on that song. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. And then what he did to make it even better, he had B. Du Bobest singing background on it. <laughs> and then to top it off on that, he put the violin on it. And then Tony and I both, when we first heard it with the violin, tears almost came to our eyes because it's so touching but it's rich. And one of the strongest lines in that song was that humanity is strong. Mm -hmm. That no matter, we say, uh, I mentioned something about in a world where people don't get along, we come to Soboba Day and discover humanity is strong. Mm -hmm. And that's an important thing. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the way that B. Du Bobes is uh, uh, giving me a background in, in, on the, on the uh, chorus is special. I mean, a lot of people over here are not familiar with the Senegalese sound, so they thought they were women. <laughs> and, I said, and I said, no, these aren't women. These are brothers. They're men, and they like women. <laughs> but, um, but, but, but the piece, the song itself, is a celebration of a place that was designed mm -hmm. for artists to go for a retreat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's a place where, and, 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 the, and the taste of the song is a kind of taste that we want, you know, um, 
Um, there is a place in Africa, a natural paradise. You see the, uh, uh, what is it, the, uh, you feel the love of Africa as you eat your fish and rice, you know. And we talked about the, the drums are heard and there's always prayers. I mean, that, and that's exactly what happened. Tony and I were swimming every single morning, man. The water was rich. The people thought we were crazy because it was about maybe 65 degrees. It wasn't hot, hot. But we had just come from 35 degrees. So to us, it was hot enough. Mm -hmm. And we went swimming. You we took advantage of the place, mm -hmm. of, the, of the food of the water, mm -hmm. of the people, mm -hmm. and everybody's smiling. When you see people, they, they got, it's, it's good morning, it's mm -hmm. a beautiful feeling, it's a good energy. And, and I do believe that there is going to be a, a paradigm shift. I do believe that we will ultimately see some changes in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. But I only say that because I am working towards it, and I'm and I'm working with a crew. Mm -hmm. I'm working with people who feel the same way, mm -hmm. and we've been having so much fun, mm -hmm. and we've been having a wonderful creative surge, mm -hmm. and I look forward to that. And I think that, um, uh, and and we, and we have some singers who are trying to keep. Like I just did something, a concert at BAM at the at the uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, right, um, and the um, Brooklyn Academy of Music. And the brother, the piece, the title of the concert was Love Revolution. Mm -hmm. And this young man, I can't think of his name, but Onaje Allen Gums was the person who hooked it up. He's a known jazz piano player. And he's a very good friend of mine. And he had this uh, young man write this song called Love Revolution, which was really saying that our revolution must be about love. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, it's not going to be a revolution. Mm -hmm. So we've got to stop war, we've got to stop madness, we've got to stop the killing, we've got to stop hurting each other and be about love. Mm -hmm. So it's about a love revolution. Mm -hmm. And then, and, and so I found myself doing the piece that I did with Tony over in Africa, there will be a revolution because mm -hmm. I truly believe that there will be a revolution, but we have to understand what kind. We're not talking about revolution where I'm going to get a gun, sit on a rooftop, and start shooting at cops. Mm -hmm. That's not the revolution. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a, 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 a cerebral gun mm -hmm. and shoot all the crap that's in my mind out, <laughs> get rid of the bad stuff in my own self, mm -hmm. and, re and, and revolve and evolve mm -hmm. to a point where I can appreciate life. Mm -hmm. And then everybody I come in contact with will be able to appreciate themselves a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So the revolution is a personal thing, mm -hmm. and it's an internal thing. Mm -hmm. But it's just like we got black folks asking for reparations. Like black folks worked for 400 years, didn't get paid. We, we picked all that cotton and made America rich, and there ain't nobody giving us a dime. We got to work on the reparations of ourselves because mm -hmm. re reparations means repairing something mm -hmm. that's been broken. Mm -hmm. So we have to feel like we're, we're strong mm -hmm. and standing. Mm -hmm. And in order for that to happen, if you can get yourself together, it's like the woman that tells me she can't find no man, so she's going to hang out with women. Mm -hmm. I'm saying no. I said no, no, no. You can't find a man because you haven't geared yourself up to do that. Mm -hmm. You are you. If you get yourself together mm -hmm. and you be as much woman as you can be, a man will come looking for you. You have everything you want, but a lot of times we don't want to do the work mm -hmm. to make ourselves the best person that we can be. Mm -hmm. And that's our only responsibility if we're here on earth, mm -hmm. to take care of business. Mm -hmm. Make yourself the best person you can possibly be. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you can to build yourself up, to make yourself feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. If you feel good about yourself, you're not going to be blaming other people for your problems. Mm -hmm. You'll be responsible and you'll solve your own problems. And you'll also get help because when you start helping yourself, angels come up mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. When you start making moves to try to do something good, you'd be surprised at how many people say, what you doing? Let me help you out. And they'll join hands with you. That's what we're moving towards. Mm -hmm. And if we're not moving towards that, then I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Nice.
Man, it's always a blessing to have brother dude. Hey, it's a blessing you know, to be is, here. This is, this is it's a blessing. This it's is, a blessing this is, to be you know, here, bro. No. And I and 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 you with one of my favorite groups. And I mean, B Do Bobes. These young men are more than just singers. I mean, we watch them perform mm -hmm. in Dakar. Mm -hmm. We watch them change into their white suits and the reminders of the of the BGs and all that stuff. <laughs> we watch the crowd go crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I watched the little girls fall in love w with his brother. And, uh, I mean, uh, it just, I, and, and, and then I, I got a chance to meet Beatty's lady and I, we got a chance to spend time with, mm -hmm. with their grandparents in Podor mm -hmm. and oh my God. So, I mean, I know that there is a world out there mm -hmm. that is that is ripe and ready mm -hmm. for for the new world that we need to build. Mm -hmm. But we still have to build. We still got to work. It's not going to happen just by dreaming. Mm -hmm. You've got to get down. You got to roll up your sleeves. You got to do some work. And I, I'm just happy that I'm on a team mm -hmm. that thinks mm -hmm. basically the same way I think. So just to close it out, if you could do like a piece that one of your Oh, um, well, I have a, I have a, I have a pledge, um, and I think that would be appropriate at this time. Before I do every concert mm -hmm. that we do with the Last Poets, mm -hmm. um, and before I do any workshops at my schools when I'm working with kids, mm -hmm. I always give them a pledge that I wrote, and I actually did this pledge freestyle. Mm -hmm. I had told the, um, I told the. Uh, uh, I I I I do brother. I I I told the um the kids mm -hmm. that I don't pledge allegiance to the flag mm -hmm. because the flag has never pledged allegiance to my people. Mm -hmm. And I don't sing the Star Spangled Banner mm -hmm. because that's a war song. Mm -hmm. I mean it's kind of ironic, mm -hmm. you know that they'll you get you start your day out by singing Oh say can you see. And I told my bombs bursting in air, rockets red glare. So I said, I don't sing the Star Strangled Banner. Mm -hmm. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. And then I so I was a keynote speaker mm -hmm. at a school about 15 years ago now, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to speak because they had hired me to be the keynote. And a little girl, it was about 1,500 people in the audience. Mm -hmm. And a little girl raised her hand, and I saw her, and I acknowledged her. And I guess I could have ignored her, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And she says, you didn't sing the Star Spangled Banner. You didn't pledge allegiance, because I'm standing in front, right next to the superintendent and the principal. <laughs> but I, I stood. I didn't <coughs> sit down, but I didn't pledge, and I didn't sing. Mm -hmm. And so when she threw me under the bus <laughs> like that, I just went on and said, no, I didn't. <laughs> What can you say? You know, I said. Besides, I got a much better pledge than the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I didn't have anything. <laughs> I was lying. I wanted to to do. I had a uh, another um, little opening rap that I would do when I go into the schools mm -hmm. and try to get the attention of the kids. And I got tired of it because I've been doing it for like years. Right, right. I wanted to do something different. And so when I said I had a better pledge than the Pledge of Allegiance. This old sister down in the front row, she says, can we hear your pledge, brother? I said, Lord have mercy. <laughs> so here I was put in a, in a real tight situation. But what I came up with, and I give thanks to my ancestors and to God, I give all the glory mm -hmm. to the powers, the forces of nature, because they helped me out. I didn't do the rap, as, I'm a, I did it real slow. I'm gonna do it with a rhythm now. But I did it real slow because I was thinking mm -hmm. about the next word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and but the but the rap has become internationally famous. Mm -hmm. I want to be what I can be to be proud 
healthy and free. I want to say what I know to help my brothers and sisters grow. I want to feel good about me and blame no one for my misery. Cause I'll be strong to turn it around. I want to go up. I'm not going down. I want to do what I can do to make all my dreams come true. Remember my past, the good and bad, how I made it art even when it was sad. I want to show share whatever my gift and when you're feeling low I'll give you a lift I want to live without fear and know that I'm blessed for being here and know that you're blessed for being here and know that we're blessed for being here and know that we're blessed Woo! Thank you so much. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Nice day. Yeah. Nice day. Thank you so much, brother. Hey, man. Thank you. And now, I think it's about tea time now. All right. All right. <laughs>